Today, we're diving into the forces that set the limits on how many living things an ecosystem can support. It all comes down to the biotic and abiotic factors that play a big role in determining the number of organisms an ecosystem can sustain. Think of it like nature's balanced scale. Too much or too little of something can tip the balance and affect the entire ecosystem. Let's break it down. Every ecosystem has a limit to how many organisms it can support. This is called its carrying capacity. The carrying capacity is like the maximum number of plants, animals, and other living things that can survive in an area without running out of resources. When an ecosystem reaches its carrying capacity, things start to balance out. If it goes over the limit, the ecosystem can struggle to support all the organisms, leading to competition scarcity of resources, or population declines. So what sets this limit? That's where biotic and abiotic factors come in. Biotic factors are the living things that affect the ecosystem. These include plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, and their interactions, like who eats what, who competes with whom, and who helps each other out. Here are a few key ways biotic factors can limit the number of organisms. Food availability. Every living thing needs food to survive. In a forest, the amount of plants, or producers, limits how many herbivores can live there. And if there aren't enough herbivores, carnivores, like wolves or foxes, will also struggle to find enough food. If food runs out, populations can shrink until balance is restored. Predation. Predators help keep populations in check. For example, If a rabbit population grows too large, predators like foxes will have plenty to eat and may increase in number. But as the fox population grows, they'll eventually reduce the number of rabbits, limiting the food available to themselves. Predation keeps populations from growing out of control. Competition. When organisms compete for the same resources, like food, water, or space, it can limit how many can survive. For example, two species of birds might compete for the same nesting spots in a forest. The stronger or more adaptable species might thrive, while the other struggles to survive. This competition can limit the population size of both species. Disease. Biotic factors also include diseases, which can spread quickly in crowded populations, causing a decline in numbers. A disease that affects one species can ripple through the food chain, affecting predators and prey alike. On the other side, abiotic factors are the non-living components of an ecosystem. These include things like sunlight, temperature, water, soil, and oxygen. Abiotic factors set the stage for what life can exist in a particular area, and here's how they can limit populations. Water. All living things need water to survive. In areas with limited water, like deserts, only a few species can live there. The plants and animals that do survive are specially adapted to handle drought. If water becomes even more scarce, the ecosystem can only sustain a smaller number of organisms. Temperature. The climate of an area controls which species can live there. For example, polar bears are adapted to freezing temperatures, while cacti thrive in hot, dry climates. If the temperature becomes too extreme, either too hot or too cold, it limits the types and number of organisms that can survive. Sunlight. Sunlight is a key abiotic factor because it's the energy source for plants. Without enough sunlight, plants can't grow, and that affects the entire food chain. In deep oceans or dense forests where sunlight is limited, fewer organisms can thrive compared to sunny open areas. Soil and nutrients. The quality of soil determines which plants can grow in an area. Rich, nutrient-dense soil can support a wide variety of plants, while poor, rocky soil may only support a few hardy species. Fewer plants mean less food for herbivores, which then limits the number of predators in the ecosystem. Space. Organisms also need space to live and grow. If there's not enough room, animals might have to compete for shelter or nesting spots. In crowded ecosystems, organisms may struggle to find enough resources, leading to a limit on population sizes. Both biotic and abiotic factors work together to set the carrying capacity of an ecosystem. 
For example, let's look at a pond. The abiotic factors, like water quality, sunlight, and temperature, determine which plants can grow in the pond. These plants then provide food for herbivores, like fish or insects, which in turn support carnivores, like birds or larger fish. If the water level drops due to a drought, an abiotic change, the amount of space and food for fish decreases, limiting how many fish can live in the pond. Fewer fish means less food for the birds that rely on them. If any one factor changes, whether it's a biotic factor like disease or an abiotic factor like a change in temperature, it can affect the entire ecosystem. The key is balance. Ecosystems are like finely tuned machines and both living and non-living factors keep them running smoothly. When something shifts too much, the number of organisms the ecosystem can support changes and that can lead to population changes, migrations, or even extinctions. Biotic and abiotic factors are constantly interacting to limit how many organisms an ecosystem can sustain. By keeping populations in check, these factors help maintain balance in the environment, ensuring that ecosystems stay healthy and functional. That's it for today's lesson. Next time you're out in nature, think about the balance between biotic and abiotic factors. They're the invisible forces working behind the scenes to keep ecosystems running smoothly.